Okay, so we are now recording. Um, Jen, I'm going to make you co-host in case there's um, people from the public who have comment. Okay. And I can't see them if I'm sharing. Thank you guys so much for making time to be here. I'm going to also um, bring Lawrence Cook in. He's uh, the representative from AMP who's been um, communicating with us. Okay. Let me just kick this off. So welcome to the special meeting of the Amherst Mass Conservation Commission on January 18th, 2023 at noon. Um, the one item on our agenda is uh, Hickory Ridge Order of Conditions at 191 West Pomeroy Lane. Um, this is supposed to be an informational discussion to catch the commission up on um, changes to the order to the project and therefore the order of conditions that have been going on um, outside of our public meetings. So, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me just give you guys a little bit of a sort of um, narrative update. Um, and then I'll turn it over to, to Lawrence. Um, so you guys might recall there have been four minor administrative changes to the um, originally approved order of conditions. Um, and I can... Let me see. I can run through what those are, um, if that would be helpful really quickly. Um, so there was one change, which was adding new and larger um, equipment pads within the fenced um, structure, and those were outside of um, CONCOM jurisdiction. So they were outside a buffer zone when those were approved. Um, there were also... Um, uh, changes to the the vegetation on site um, there was an approval for pollinator species mix to be used on the site um, there was approval for changes to the vegetative screening on site um, there were changes to the um, utility interconnect at the roadway so it was changing from one side of the road to the other and then um, the other change was that there was a shift in the panels, which was presented to us as a shift, but it was actually an expansion um, of the solar array. And this is the easternmost array shifting to a westerly direction. And so the understanding that the commission had when that was approved was that it was moving out of natural heritage endangered species area and moving out of floodplain which is a resource area bordering land subject to flooding, but that it was moving closer to the buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetland. And um, so those were the changes that were approved. Now, um, there have been additional changes that have been made. Now this permit was approved in 2018. So it's a fairly old permit. There have been some changes that have happened so we can talk about what those are. Um, and those are requirements that town staff have required of AMP. Um, there's also been sort of triggered changes as a result of those minor administrative changes. So um, we've been in constant communication with AMP going over iterations of what they need and what we are, what the staff asks are. And that's how we've arrived at the plan that's in your inbox. Now, I'm not sure that that plan captures all of the asks of staff, um, but we can talk about that and um, let's bring Lawrence, uh, let you know, bring him into the conversation so we can start the discussion. I did um, kind of run through some comments on the plans, which I um, uh, have here to share as well once, once Lawrence has had a chance to um, talk with you all. Great, thanks, Erin. Um, sorry, I was a little late. Zoom asked me to update when we tried to join the meeting, so I just needed a, a few minutes for that. Uh, I will also say that you will immediately notice an accent. I do have a tendency to talk fast sometimes. So if uh, anything is unclear, please just let me know and I'll repeat and go over it and try and slow down. Um, yes, so we have, um, uh, I work for AMP. We are the owner of the project. Uh, we acquired the site from the original developer. Um, as Aaron explained, this was all permitted prior to our acquisition of the site. and. 
Uh, subsequent to us buying it, we've had to uh, we've we, we've made a, a couple of changes. One of those was moving from a fixed tilt array uh, to a uh, a tracking system uh, that will follow the sun and generate more power, uh, and also the addition of some batteries as well to allow us to store excess power and provide at a uh, a, 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 at a time when the, the the energy is needed either to meet the evening peaks or uh, as a call on by the utility in times of, of scarcity. Um, so we have also been going through the final designs um, with our chosen subcontractor and in consultation with the fire department. Uh, there have been some uh, relatively minor modifications to the access road to increase turning radii um, to allow uh, uh, the, the, the fire department equipment to, uh, to, 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 to turn the corners a little easier. That has had a, a knock-on effect of having to reroute some of the uh, utility poles that will be uh, connecting to the site, uh, and has required the uh, a, a few additional trees to come down. Um, we have also, in consultation with Erin, uh, moved uh, some of the fences uh, away from where they were originally uh, proposed and brought that fence line in, which has uh, released some areas um, that we will now not be impacting. Um, particularly on the Western array um, where we're, um, uh, because it, the, the design of that was for a uh, fixed tilt. So we'd have long rows there because of the trackers go north, south rather than east, west. Um, that uh, part of the area there where some trees would have to have come down uh, now no longer um, need to be developed. Um, the bridge uh, that uh, enters the site uh, that was also subject to uh, the approvals, um, we've obviously had a couple more years deterioration and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the engineer that's, uh, that's done the bridge uh, repair design has now um, uh, recommended that the concrete deck be removed uh, and replaced uh, with a timber deck. Um, and that, uh, that building permit was submitted on Monday. Uh, the plan there is primarily to, to do all of the original um, stuff that was required at the approaches, which was to excavate and replace the, uh, the, the cracked concrete decking at the front. Um, but the, uh, the new requirement is to replace the concrete decking to allow for a more substantial and secure um, uh, railing uh, along the edges. Um, but no other variations to the, uh, the ratings or, or, or anything else to do with the bridge uh, are proposed. Um, the, uh, the battery storage, uh, we've been in consultation with the various departments in the town, um, which are located on the two pads. Um, we have agreed that we would put in some, uh, secondary containment around the, uh, the batteries, the final form to be agreed with the town, um, that will, uh, capture anything either, uh, that, that, um, if there's ever an incident on site, um, that would capture any of the, uh, the transformer oil, as well as anything, uh, from the batteries. Uh, the batteries themselves are a self-contained um, uh, sort of, it's called a centipede system, um, which is basically connecting stacks uh, up to a central control. Um, they have 24-hour uh, monitoring um, and, uh, and uh, thermal runaway protections. Uh, in consultation with the fire department, they will also have dry risers for them to be able to connect to um, it, when, uh, uh, if, if there was ever an emergency. Um, the road um, from the original permit has also changed. Uh, it was originally going through the, um, the easement for the DPW for that sewer line. It's now running across the south. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's primarily the, uh, the roundup of all the changes. Is, uh, does anyone have any questions, or does anything require further explanation? So I'm happy to jump in if it makes it easier for folks to just digest this, but if folks yeah. have questions, I don't want to interrupt either. I don't have any immediate questions, Erin. Um, was okay. there anything that you wanted to flag <clears throat> as concerning yeah. the plans as they are? Yeah, there's just a couple things and you know, we're we're working through these things. So I want to be really we're we're trying to work with AMP, particularly because number one, the commission has such a limited um, bandwidth with regard to time. And so we want to try to talk about this off of a regular meeting to give more time. Um, 
So in November of 22, the um, long-eared bat was um, determined to be endangered. And um, as a result of that, AMP is trying to observe the time of year restrictions, even though there are no um, habitats that have been identified in the area. It's kind of like, a, you know, to be overly cautious, which I fully support. Um, and so the tree removal, which um, uh, um, Lawrence noted at the, at the beginning, and um, I just want to point out to you guys really quickly a couple things. So the, the orange here is the original approved fence line location. Um, so like looking over to the west here, you can see this is the original fence line location. And you can see where AMP has moved out of that. So part of the changes is, you know, this area is no longer in the project area. Um, so I just want to point those things out. Like as a result of that, even though there's some additional tree removal for the um, access road and also, you know, the fire department turnarounds and things, we are gaining some trees over in this area where the um, where it was pulled back. And similarly, this area here was also pulled back. Um, so the new fence line is going to be here. That pulls them out of um, flood zone, out of natural heritage area. So these are all good things that we've sort of negotiated. Um, so the number of trees has increased, and part of it is because of the access road turning radius for, needed by the fire department, and also because since 2018, um, when these trees were originally surveyed, they've they've grown. So like or, in order to be counted, they would have been four inches in diameter, and now they're over that because they've grown since 2018. So I have no problem with the tree removal changes. Dave and I walked the site yesterday with Lawrence um, where we're comfortable with the changes that have been proposed. Um, that's really kind of the most urgent approval that's needed from the board because they're trying to get the tree removal done before January 30th to try to be sensitive to the long-eared bat restrictions. So that I fully support and want to make clear at the, at the front end. Um, what are the other things? <laughs> Um, uh, there, was a, there, there was a gate uh, that was requested at the entrance. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I do have that in my notes here. So thank you, um, Lawrence, for reminding me. I keep wanting to call you Larry. I'm so sorry. That's I keep hesitating worry. when I say your name. Well, we had a commissioner, Lawrence, who went by Larry, who <laughs> yes. left the commission in Aaron's defense. Um, but I just want to say with the tree removal, Commissioners, does anyone have any red flags on that? Because let's just weigh uh, in. And, and just no. to provide a little bit of additional context, okay. sorry to, to cut that person off. The, uh, the the original plan called for the removal of 191 trees. Uh, we're now up to 211. So we're talking about 19 trees, um, which some of which will be handed back with the moving out of that area that Erin highlighted. So we're not talking about a significant move. That is fine. I think Fl I heard Fletcher say he's fine with it. Um, yeah, I have no concerns. That's pretty yeah. straightforward. It's very straightforward. So just for the record, green light, do what you need to do. Okay. Um, so a couple of just sort of administrative things. Um, these plans that were submitted to us have not been stamped by an engineer. So uh, we're going to need those. Um, and that's just a a notation and I'm just going to stop sharing this for a second so I can share the screen I'm reading off of because this has got my actual comments. I hope it's hard for me to see what I'm sharing. Can you guys see Hickory Ridge Amp Dynamic Energy at the top? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Okay, um, so changes to the roadway. We need a letter stamped and signed by the engineer that the road will not be adding fill to the bordering land subject to flooding. That's an administrative task that can be done, but it needs to be done before construction. Um, and again, those changes were requested by the fire department for turning. Um, and so uh, as long as we have some sort of confirmation that it's not going to result in fill in the floodplain, I'm comfortable with that. We talked about the additional tree removal. Um, the plans are not stamped by um, an engineer, which we're going to need a stamped set of plans. Um, Lawrence did reference containment for the equipment pad. I'm comfortable with them saying that they'll provide details on containment, but I do want to review the equipment pad containment details um, prior to construction, review and approve those prior to construction. So I'd like to just work with them on what they're proposing and make sure that I feel that it's adequate. Um, again, those are 
outside of CONCOM jurisdiction, I believe outside of buffer zone. Um, it's one of them, the corner um, touches the, the flood zone or the grading touches the flood zone, but not the pad itself. But I, I still would like the opportunity to review that. Um, <clears throat> So the other um, thing, and I'm just going to switch screens really quickly, so bear with me, is that when the commission approved the shift of the pads west, um, so uh, this, this location here, it moved closer to the wetland. When the town, the town has been planning its trail system, which is still under planning, the plan was to bring the trail system around the array like this and down. When they shifted the array closer to that wetland, it made it so that we can't or don't would prefer not to come down um, in that skinny area between the array and the wetland. So the idea that was flown was that the town would be permitting a crossing here, like a boardwalk crossing going over the wetland, and AMP would cover the cost of that. Um, and that is basically to accommodate their shift in the design that they've requested. Um, I'm comfortable with that provided that AMP provides a letter to um, the town indicating that they're committing to covering that cost. Um, as you can see, I mean, I've uh, tried to advocate for reducing the fence line as much as possible, pulling it in closer to the array. When we did the original change in um, the configuration, um, the fence line stayed as is. And so as we've gone through iterations, um, it's been clear that the fence line could be reduced. So um, that change is made. And I think that's a good thing. Um, we talked about the new gate. We talked about, oh, um, we talked about long-eared bats. So there was two other items that I just want to touch base with quickly. Um, the first is that the, fa the phasing is going to be a little bit different with this permit um, than was kind of spelled out in the order of conditions and I'll explain why. So they, in order to even get on the site, they have to do the bridge work. And just to be clear, the commission was provided at one point a copy of the updated engineering report. And we reviewed that and didn't think the changes to the bridge were substantive. We didn't issue an amendment for that because the changes to the bridge are so minor. It's not like they're doing any work whatsoever on the foundation of the bridge or the footprint of the bridge. It's, it's the decking on top of the bridge that's changing. So Lawrence touched on that, but I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, but in order to gain access to the site for installation of erosion control, tree removal, et cetera, they have to fix the bridge first. So phase one is essentially fix the bridge. Once they fix the bridge, then they have to take the trees down in order to comply with the time of year restrictions for the bat. So that'll be step two. Um, once the trees are down, then we're going to have a pre-construction for the actual construction phase of the project, which would be me meeting with the contractor prior to any earthwork taking place and inspecting the erosion controls on the site. At that point, once earthwork begins, our um, monitoring would begin on the site. Um, there was just Sorry. one other... Oh, go ahead. Erin, two quick things. Um, one is... Shit, did I just lose it? Oh, who is the contractor? Uh, we're, use, we're using a company called Dynamic Energy Solutions. Okay. Oh, that's Dynamic Energy Plan Changes. Okay, got it. Yeah. Second question. I just want to make sure I'm up with the lingo. The, Second, the, um, the, the, civil, the civil contractor is uh, Jay Bates and Son. Okay. Okay. And who will be doing the bridge deck, the tree removal and the bridge deck replacement work? That's all Jay Bates and Son. Okay. Okay. And they know that they need to be proactively communicating with Aaron about when that work will be happening. Yes, we will have, uh, when that work is gearing up, we will arrange for another sort of pre-construction meeting with uh, all relevant parties. Uh, and part of that will be discussing monitoring flow of information, uh, notifications and all that kind of stuff. Great. Yeah, I have every reason to believe you'll do that. But just an asterisk on that is that we have an active community. And if people don't understand what's going on and Aaron isn't in the loop and they call, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. So any proactive communication about activity on the site will really help the whole program. Um, second comment slash question. I know you understand this, but when we're replacing the bridge deck, if there is any indi like any indication of more work that needs to be done on that bridge, it has got to come in front of the Conservation Commission. So 
we were hesitant and nervous to, to kind of approve that minor amendment because, you know, those bridges, the bridges over the Fort River have been kind of a sticking point throughout this permitting process, even back in 2018. And if it turns up that one of those abutments isn't any good or anything has to happen below that bridge deck, we really need to hear about it proactively. Um, yeah. I know mean, have every reason to believe you would, but I just need to say that for the record um, because that's been a tricky thing throughout this project. So part of the uh, the, the change uh, to the decking being proposed was following a um, recent inspection by the engineers. Um, okay. So they, uh, when we uh, we obviously had the original bridge assessment that was done as part of the, the previous developer had the original uh, bridge assessment done as part of the 2018 permit set. That had yeah. stuck around for a couple of years now. So as we moved into uh, taking things over, there was a reassessment done, and okay. it was the reassessment that's driving the changes. So okay. they, as part of that reassessment, they again inspected the foundations, the the lower support beams, and things like that. And uh, okay. uh, at the moment, the uh, obviously until we lift everything off, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand fully what you're saying. Um, but uh, yeah, that it, it is more recent information that's driving that. Change. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Aaron. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, thank you for touching on those items. And and for the record, I did talk with Lawrence about um, er an erosion control inspection prior to the bridge work, a kickoff with the tree removal folks prior to the tree removal beginning, and then the pre-construction meeting. So we're we're trying to, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here, but thank you for um, teasing yeah, that apart. Amp and our developer, uh, our APC contractor, are fully cognizant of the uh, the eyeballs on this. It's town-owned land. It's going to be a town-owned resource at the end of it. Um, right. We're happy to have over-inspect and uh, over-meet and, and things like that to make sure everybody's happy. This is going awesome. to be a, a, a wonderful joint effort between ourselves and the town. And um, yeah, we're, uh, uh, we're happy to share and flow any information that's needed. Great. I really appreciate that. I like the reframing as a wonderful joint effort. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So yeah. the, the only ahead. final, I guess, question I have for Lawrence, and this is, you know, I apologize because we're, mm. this is all in real time here. Um, yes. So Lawrence, um, on the draft set that you sent me, we had storm talked about just some, that. Yeah. Yeah, some stormwater trenching um, and, and for the commission to understand I'm a stormwater person. I have a strong stormwater training background. Any plan I look at, I'm looking at stormwater. I didn't permit this project. There was no stormwater incorporated on this order of conditions. So I'm concerned that there are some slopes, um, particularly on the Eastern Array that need some stormwater. And I've um, talked with uh, Lawrence about incorporating some stormwater trenching to capture any runoff that's coming in the form of sheet flow before it hits the slopes. Um, and so Lawrence, those trenches didn't make it on that plan. Um, I will find that out. That wasn't an instruction for me to remove them. Um, okay. it, when we have the stamped plan set, I will yep. ensure that they, cause they're, they're, they're infiltration trenches more than anything, some more substantial than, than stormwater features. Okay. Um, but they, they just provide an additional capacity and slow rate for the, uh, for, for any stormwater that may be there. Um, yeah. So yes, I will. I will ensure that when, once you receive the stamped IFC sets, that those uh, those are included there. Beautiful. Okay. So for the commissions, so those are the sort of overview of the changes that have been requested, delivered, and or pending. Um, the 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 timeline is tight on the bridge um, repairs, on the tree removal, and once those items are done, uh, at that point they're going to be um, you know getting on the ground with start of work, installing erosion controls, et cetera. So I want to keep you guys informed of everything that's happening by way of changes. For me personally, a lot of these changes have been, as I said, either improvements, staff negotiated changes to try to reduce impact as much as possible, and also account for changes that were made where to ensure that there's no resource area alteration. So it's really just to get your buy-in, make sure that nobody's like, your way off the mark and and or um, just confirm that that the changes that we're negotiating are okay with you. Um, so that's all I'll say, but I'll um, step back for you guys to talk and if you wanna take public comment. Yeah, Erin, I have the utmost confidence in your technical review of this project and appreciate 
both Lawrence and Aaron, the amount of behind the scenes work you guys have been doing to have this. It's a much improved project than the one that we permitted, I believe. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I don't see any red flags. Um, any other commissioners questions or concerns? Seems pretty thorough to me. Yep. Um, seconded. Okay, so I'm just going to open this for public comment and see if we have any members of the public who have comments or questions. Um, so if you're here in attendance about the um, minor administrative changes and current plan for as permitted for the um, AMP solar installation um, at Hickory Ridge, please raise your hand and I will bring you in. Michael Lipinski. Remind me, I have after this that I have one idea about how to communicate tree clearing, Aaron. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Michael, I'm bringing you in as a panelist. We can see that you're here, Michael, but you're muted. I just have some questions about the schedule. Okay. Uh, I don't have access to all the information you guys have, obviously, but so today's the 18th and I see seven work days until January 30th. And my understanding is there's something concerning not cutting down trees to, you know, it, it connected to the long-eared bat. Now, is that January 30th you're talking about? January 30th, 2023 or January 30th, 2024? Does the board mind if I respond? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, okay, so what, what we have, I, I don't know how aware you are, but the US Fish and Wildlife made the determination back in November to uh, move the designation for the long-eared bat from threatened to endangered. Um, they made that designation in October and had an effective date of uh, January 30th for the new regulations to take um, uh, take effect. Those new regulations have not been posted yet. Um, there is uh, the existing window is till March 31st, based under the the, the, the threatened species. Um, but the, uh, the we don't know if those new rules are going to apply from January 30th. Um, and until those new rules are, are posted, um, then, then we have kind of two dates that we're working to. January 30th would be ideal because that would be before the effective date, um, but March 31st would be a kind of fallback date um, that would happen um, if there's no new rule published by the... Uh, okay, the reason why I'm asking is it really seems unrealistic that there would be the needed bridge repair and a crew going out and cutting all down the trees that were needed to be cut by January yeah. 30th this year. That sounds totally unrealistic. So there, um, there, are, there are two ways of cutting down the tree. There's, there's, well, there's elements to the tree removal. There is the cutting down of the trees and then there is the removal of the, uh, of the uh, trees themselves. So the trees could be cut down by chainsaw um, within that time without needing to move any heavy equipment over the, over the bridge. And then the, um, the, the the actual timber itself would be removed once those bridge uh, repairs have been done. Okay, so the plan is really send a crew out there with chainsaws, cut down all the trees, deal with the bridge, then go down and, and deal with the wood that's been already knocked down. Correct. It wouldn't be but, ideal, but that would be the fallback, yeah. At least that sounds a little bit more realistic. Um, but along along those same lines, this is a, this is a project that, doesn't have a building permit yet, right? There's uh, one pending. It, yeah, there, there is it, a pending it, building permit for the bridge, um, but uh, the IFC sets that are required um, to submit for a building permit are subject to the approval of the CONCOM um, for these minor changes. Right, so, uh, well, some of the changes that have occurred in this project, I, I really wouldn't consider minor when you talk about the, the number of batteries that are now proposed and don't show up at all in the original you know, proposal from the, the uh, special permit from the ZBA. But uh, there are, are lots of things that seem unsettled with this project. And it sounds like you guys are giving the green light to take down close to 200 trees for a project that 
still seems really fluid to me. It has doesn't have a building permit. Um, there's no guarantees that you know what the company says they're going to do, they're going to do. And yet it seems like they're being given the green light to actually do the project without a permit in hand. I'm not sure if that's the way things are usually done in town, but it just seems strange to me that something of this size in particular in a site that's so sensitive is being given a green light without having the necessary permit and actually the necessary details on the plans, for instance, the containment system for the batteries that was mentioned. Well, yes, they say they're going yeah. to do it, but where's so, the plan? So that's, Michael, that's my concern. Okay, thank you. Um, we appreciate where you're coming from. I just wanna clarify a couple of things there. So this project is permitted by the Conservation Commission. So this is something that um, we have the opportunity to look at what we've considered and previously approved as minor administrative changes. So um, this isn't something that we're deciding to go through with now. This is a permitted project. Um, and then the second thing I just wanna say is that I think what you've probably heard us discussing and me emphasizing throughout this special meeting is the need for constant communication because of these factors that you're highlighting that we need to figure, you know, there are some fluid parts of this project and we need to communicate early and often about it. But you should know that there are many intersection points where Aaron meets with Larry, Lawrence, excuse me, Amp Solar and the contractors on the site to make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can to protect the resources on the site. Um, so in fact, this project, because of this process, this fluid process is much improved in terms of protecting our resources than the one that we permitted in 2018. Um, so I just want to flag that. I understand your concerns um, and, and I appreciate you being here for this meeting. Thanks. Uh, and also just to, uh, just to add to the, the, the batteries and the change of the racking and things like that, that has already gone through ZBA approval. Um, the, uh, the, the, the civil IFC set, which is going to be required for the building permit, um, is subject to the changes to the road and things that have been made that have necessitated the changes to the trees, et cetera. So the, the, the changes that are required for us to submit the building permit um, is, are, are the minor ones. The, the, the major ones to do with batteries and things like that have, have already been agreed by the town. Great. Thanks, Lawrence. And thank you, Michael, for being here. All right. If you are a member of the public and you have any further questions or comments about the AMP Solar Project at Hickory Ridge, please raise your hand. While we're waiting to see if anyone raises their hand, the one, my idea, um, Jenny Kalik, I see that you have your hand up, give me one second. So Aaron, sometimes when the DPW is doing big construction projects, we get, the town has like a listserv to notify residents that it's happening. Mm -hmm. Is that something we could use to notify residents that this work is going to start? Yeah, it's a it's a great point, Jen. So there's like going to be a whole publicity campaign about this, okay. which Dave is working on with AMP right now. It's going to include okay. probably a notification in the newspaper. It's going to include signage on the site, and it may include additional items such as what you're describing. Um, but okay. yeah, to answer your question, yes, there's going to be okay. a, a, in the very, very near future, a large... Um, uh, blast of information that this is kind of our the last um, I, I would say requirement with the exception of ZBA needs to review this but if the CONCOM gives this its blessing there's a very good chance that um, it's going to move forward quickly so um, okay yeah yeah just so that you know if as as Michael just pointed out, you know, people are headed out there with chainsaws in the next seven working days. Um, we might want to notify yeah. residents that that is expected and permitted yep. and approved. Yep. Um, okay. Sorry about that, Jenny. I am moving you in as a panelist. Okay, can you hear me, Jen? Yes, thank you. Thank you, just a very brief follow-up. Thank you, uh, CONCOM, for very careful work. I'm thinking about this particular project, the way it's being handled with all the changes as a precedent 
within town. Let's suppose this project goes incredibly well and everybody cooperates and makes sure everything gets done. Uh, when projects are permitted and then so many changes occur called minor changes, and those of us in the public actually never see what's going on. It's truly invisible what's been happening at Hickory Ridge to the rest of us. It feels as if one thing to consider is precedent. When projects will have to change, we know that technology changes uh, are going to require re-examining uh, conversations, perhaps with batteries or other issues. And we have the CONCOM, which is so diligent and so detail-oriented, handling this one. But I'm thinking uh, going forward, we've got a precedent here that could be a very bad precedent for the town, that permits occur, then lots of changes are really needed. Perhaps the uh, company and the contractors we're dealing with are much harder to deal with. So I would request that public access to the whole process from the time there are changes, uh, agreements that are made uh, sort of behind the curtain, not in the meetings, to use that expression, uh, their, their town needs to have a method for uh, posting what's going on so concerned public can know about it. And also that this particular process, which is quite complicated and quite dependent on cooperation, is of deep concern to me, to repeat myself, because I can see how a process like this could go terribly wrong and puts an awful lot of pressure on a commission or a committee to be very, very detail oriented. So thank you for, for listening to my comment. And again, appreciation that this project seems to be in the hands of very detail oriented and very cooperative parties, but it's the future uh, as a precedent that concerns me. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. <clears throat> Jen, are you still with us? So um, it seems like we've lost Jen's audio um, and maybe her video too. Um, uh, I'm just gonna say, Michelle's got her hand raised. I'm gonna um, see, Michelle, do you wanna take the comment and maybe by the time you return, um, uh, or by the time you complete your comment, uh, Jen will be back. Sure, thanks. Um, so in regards to the tree cutting um, and the schedule for that, um, I'd like to request that if the trees are not cut by maybe February 15th or mid-February, that there be um, a nesting hawk survey done on those trees. Uh, and in which case they wouldn't be able to cut at least some of the trees and maybe a buffer. So I hope that that's extra motivation and there is enough motivation right now for the trees to get cut before mid-February, but um, that should definitely be done because that's there could very likely be red tails nesting out there. That's pretty good red tail habitat. And I you know I don't know the trees specifically, but there are some large trees out there. So I'm interested in Concom's opinion on that, but that would be a concern that I have. So my only comment on that, and Jen, can you hear us? And can yeah, I just okay. I missed a little bit of Michelle's comment. Sorry, my wire, my internet dropped off. But it was it about a certain species of bird and clearing trees during nesting periods? Is that yeah? So her comment was that if the clearing wasn't completed by February fifteenth, February fifteenth of twenty three, that the commission require a nesting hawk survey um, because apparently hawk nesting begins at early. Um, my only comment on that would be that the commission can only require that for trees that are within conservation commission jurisdiction, unless 
the um, AMP agreed to do it of areas outside of CONCOM jurisdiction, um, just for the sake of, you know, complying with the Migratory Bird Protection Act, um, you know, regulations. So just wanted to make sure that was clear. I see Alex and Andre both have comments. Andre, do you want to go ahead? Well, sure, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I had a question for uh, Lawrence from before and that I was a little bit kind of got stuck on here. Lawrence, um, you said that January 30th is when the uh, endangered species um, designation takes effect is, is that did i understand correctly correct yes the uh the announcement made by u.s fish and wildlife was that the effective date of the new guidelines would be jan 30th oh, i'm sorry the the guidelines can you what, what? so so what they uh, there's currently with the northern long-eared bat there is uh with its designation as a threatened species there were limitations on periods when we could clear trees it was primarily outside of i think uh, may to august kind of period um that you could uh you, you could sort of cut beyond that the, the the new guidelines will take effect from january the 30th but those new guidelines have not been published at all yet so in the event that those guidelines are published before the 30th, then we would have, um, uh, then we would know what we're dealing with um, post that time. Um, if, if they aren't done, then we'd still be under the, uh, the, the existing regulations, which would uh, allow for clearing up until um, March 31st. Okay, so what you're, what you're trying to do is you want to um, have this approved um, to cut the trees uh, prior to the actual regulations uh, or to the guidelines uh, uh, from the... Uh, uh, well, uh, yes. I'm sorry, from the guidelines uh, from the federal regulations are posted. Is that what, what you're saying? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I would start off by saying that there is no indication from any of the, the surveys or anything that have been done uh, that th this is a habitat that would affect northern long-eared bats, that the broad brush approach with an endangered species uh, would be that you'd have to go through uh, a consultation with US Fish and Wildlife um, to be given a, a tree clearing window. Sure, um, but what I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that what you're, you know, what you're saying is you're asking us to uh, kind of hurry and approve this in a sense, Prior to the uh, issuance of uh, regulations or guidelines uh, that uh, will be applying to, uh, to the long-eared bat, and um, I, you know, I'm 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 a little concerned about that because um, I, you know, we're we're you're asking us to do this uh, minor change um, without us knowing what the guidelines are going to be. Well, we're asking for your permission to be able to do it under the existing guidelines, which is that we can cut the trees at will before Jan 30th. Oh, I understood exactly what you're asking yeah. for. I'm telling you that I'm concerned about that. Hmm. And I'm telling the rest of the uh, the commission that I that I find that concerning. And Andre, what can you can you go into a little more detail of that? Because I I guess I'm a little unclear on sort of the <laughs> so just to give you some context to this, like we have forest cutting plans going on right now in town, like approved DCR forest cutting plans. Um, and there's no like time of year restrictions on when th that tree cutting can take place. My, and you know, I'm just t talking to the, the um, developer thinking this is, this is a good thing in the sense that they're aware of it and trying to potentially avoid an impact to the bat, but because my assumption is that they're going to be after January, after January 30th, there may be activities going on by the bat <laughs> that we're trying to, you know, uh, prevent from happening. But again, this is, I'm not familiar with this. So, um, yeah. Is it hibernating habitat? Sorry, that might help. Is it? No, there's no no indication that there's any habitat. This it is just that tree clearing activities throughout the potential area 
would be impacted. So the, the town's tree cutting would also fall under these new regulations as well, unless there is some uh, e exception for municipalities, um, because it, it, it would be any tree, tree clearing activities um, in, in the potential habitat zone of the Northern long eared Bat, which is all over Massachusetts. Sure, um, and so I and I understand that. And what I'm, um, what, let, let me just uh, uh, put it into the context of where what I'm seeing is that you're you're asking um, to be able to do this. Uh, you're asking for us to approve it uh, quickly because you want to have it done before January thirtieth, uh, when there are going to be some other regulations that uh, um, that may put a kink in, in those plans, right? Um, uh, not, not well, the, the, the kink would be that we'd have to negotiate a tree clearing window with uh, US Fish and Wildlife. It's not that the US Fish and Wildlife would turn around and say that we couldn't clear the trees and or anything like that. It's just that that, that window. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, I, I'm i retired from Fish and Wildlife and there's another person here who who's also from Fish and Wildlife. Hmm. Yeah. Can I just step in for one second here? So, Andre, this this project is permitted, you yep. know. So we oh, are I know that. approving minor. I'm just I'm just clear, just clarifying things. Um, so that this these are you know things that as a commission we've agreed are minor administrative changes to this permit. So I guess the one thing I would say is, would you prefer, what what would you what would be your preferred pathway given the situation? Well, um, number one, to do what I just said was, a, which is to express my concern about uh, being asked to hurry up to do something to avoid uh, finding out what recommendations are given by Fish and Wildlife Service to ensure that the uh, long-eared bat is protected. That's the main thing. I want to make sure that you all understand. And, yeah. um, and, I'm, and I'm also a little bit concerned that there may be some recommendations that uh, uh, we might want to have taken into uh, account that we're not going to be able to do now. Yeah. So can I ask, in your experience with fish and wildlife, is there any way, is there any middle ground between knowing nothing about what the requirements are and knowing everything about what the requirements are? Like, we know that yeah. there's not going yeah. So is there any way, is there like a contact person who could indicate for us like what the likely scenario is so that there's a middle ground between kind of the full understanding of how this this endangered species is going is going to be protected and where we are now with this kind of in limbo. Well, um, these uh, what, what, what you're talking about is uh, a process of uh, of the code of federal regulations. So uh, in the code, of, so you have the Endangered Species Act which uh, comes out of Congress and they say, yeah, you can't take endangered species X, Y, and Z. And then there are certain, um, the nuances, if you would, what gets put on in the Endangered Species Act and so on that are put out in the code of federal regulations. And so uh, right now uh, it was proposed and apparently approved to put the long-eared bat on the threatened list of uh, species. And then that goes through an approval process, uh, public uh, comment and so on and so forth. And now apparently from what I'm, uh, and now I'm just going by what uh, Lawrence Cook uh, just said to us is that they are about to propose uh, or they're about to put out, publish. Um, and Lawrence, if you can correct me on whether that's a final rule or not, um, but they're putting out their um, recommendations or their guidelines as uh, about what what they need to do. So the middle right. ground to me is to wait until we see the guidelines to okay. figure out what the legal way to do it is prior, right. once those guidelines are issued. But otherwise we're we're being asked to to kind of rush something before we get the guidelines that they say don't do this because we need to do something else. Right. That's okay. Okay, got it. Thanks, Andre. And I, Alex, I see your hand raised. Michelle, did you have like a clarifying point or a, a... sorry, I don't want to. I was like... just wondering if 
<laughs> um, we approved it now and the guide, they published the final rule which changed the guidelines. If that supersedes what we approve, that, that's all. Right, thanks. Yeah, so that was kind of where I was going is like, is there any middle ground between waiting on the approval? Can we approve and condition that if the guidelines are released and it indicates that there would be no cutting permitted at this particular place at that particular time that we would revisit the cutting plan? You know, is there some way we can add a contingency for when these guidelines are released? Um, Okay, but let me, Alex, I know you've had your hand raised for a long time and Andre, I see you. Alex, yeah, just, just, I'm ahead. sorry, just real quick. I think that is a middle ground right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Alex. Thank you. I have a couple of points. One is going back to Michelle, a simple request. If we could change the word rap, uh, the word hawk to raptor. We have owls nesting now. Just a simple note to Jen. And if you're approving cutting plans for DEC, that's probably something we should talk about offline. Going to the issue of the bat. And I understand full well Andre's discussion about the regs. To me in this project, what matters perhaps the most is whether or not there's habitat. If, and Lawrence has said, there is no habitat in this site. So evidently, he's had somebody look. And maybe Lawrence can provide us the consultant's work that, in fact, says there's uh, no habitat for the long-eared bat on this site. The worst thing we want to do for an endangered species is unknowingly provide harm or do harm. So if there, in fact, is no habitat, for the long-eared bat on the site affected that we're talking about, then um, that to me is uh, something worth knowing. And I don't, I, I haven't seen um, Lawrence provide that information. Maybe he could provide that to Jen and that would help us speed along on this decision. But uh, I understand the regs and we can wait for the regs to come out and have a condition in there, like you're suggesting, but that's kind of not going to change whether the bat is present or not. Right. Thank right. you. Thank you. That's Thanks, Alex. All, all I had for now. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Um, how much, how many trees are in our jurisdiction for this? Excuse you said me? there's two, there's 211 trees that are going to get cut. How many are in our jurisdiction? None. 20, 19, right? Is that what the answer was? 19 trees in our jurisdiction? Um, that's a great that question, Fletcher. <laughs> 22 trees? It went from 190 trees to 100 or 211 that was, trees? Or that was total, though, Fletcher, not within jurisdiction. Not within jurisdiction. So I'm asking. No, no, no. I'm, I'm clarifying that that difference was a total difference in tree clearing for the whole. Correct. Project. I know. But I was yeah. wondering. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Right. So, and we have a permitted plan here. And so now, oh, are we able to start adding these conditions? I'm, I'm kind of confused on how, where our jurisdiction lies with this all of a sudden. Um, yeah, right. I'm just trying, I thought this was an administrative change, but clearly um, other people have different ideas, which is totally fine. But um, I'm also running out of time here. So we got to, yeah, um, I was, yeah. it's seven so, o'clock, sure. I gotta go. So yeah. um, let's, get, yeah. let's, get, let's get somewhere. Yep, um, Fletcher, I was gonna, Cameron, I see your hand up. Give me a second, thanks. Um, yeah, so Aaron, what do we do? I have a hard stop yeah. at one. Fletcher's okay. in the field. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I think I think what we should do is um, continue the discussion. I think um, Lawrence, we're we're all aware that the the um, bridge work is going to be going forward. So let's proceed with the bridge work. Um, I think there's questions with the commission. I, it, it seems like generally the changes are acceptable to the board, but I think we have to have more discussion. And I think. Um, if the commission's uncomfortable in any way, then we don't proceed. And um, we continue the discussion to our next meeting and we put an item on the agenda to discuss it more. And, and I know that limits the window, but unfortunately that is the situation and we're, we're not controlling the timeline. So we're, we're doing our best to vet this and get more information. 
Um, Cameron, I know you had your hand Special up. Meeting. Oh, I just had a, a quick question. If there was any kind of precedent on for other species, even though everyone has a different, you know, like what they need. But I was wondering in past cases where there have been species listed in the regulations and guidelines are posted, where the places that are not deemed as habitat, are they left alone? Like where, what happens with those ones? Because I was wondering, could we anticipate, like you were kind of mentioning, like talking to somebody or could we anticipate that these would be regulated themselves, the land that we're talking about now? Right, that's exactly, I think, exactly Cameron, great point. I think that's kind of what Alex is saying where, um, it sounds like Lawrence is indicating that there's no indication that this is long-eared bat habitat. Um, so can we kind of document that? And then kind of, is it possible? And then Fletcher raises a really good point. Is it possible to add some sort of condition that says like, look, we're move, we're approving this cutting plan with the condition that this is not long-eared bat habitat, but when those regulations are released and the bureaucracy is in place in order to do that assessment, um, can we do it at that point? And then revisit the cutting at that, you know, I think this is tricky because this messes up the timeline, um, you know, as um, our Michael pointed out, you know, this is, we're talking about seven work days in which they wanted to do this. So it's tricky, but yes, Cameron, good point and um, good idea to kind of find a middle ground to thread through this. If I can, um, if I can just throw so one final thing in, I, I, the, 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 the reason why I say there's no indication is because the habitat or the known nesting sites are compiled as a list that, uh, based on the threatened species. So you do a, uh, a survey to look at the, how close they are to known nesting and, and, and habitats of the northern long-eared bats, and none of those are in the area. So there's, there's, okay. there's, there's been no indication that this is uh, is one of those areas. Is that is there documentation of that survey that you've uh, uh, it's It's not a formal survey. So what you would have is if you have a site that is in within a, a certain distance of a known habitat or known roosting location, then you would have to have a survey done uh, to confirm either that they exist or that they don't exist. So, so is because, there any paper trail as to no, like because, what because there's no indication of a habitat in the local area, there's been no requirement that a survey be done because okay. 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 Um Fletcher, this is gonna be continued. So go yeah. ahead. Do what okay. you gotta do. I'm um, too bad. Sorry, sorry, yeah. couldn't get anything done there, Lawrence. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think that's not entirely true. I think, you know, Erin's list of the slide that she shared with everything to move forward with on these plans is all fine with the commission. It sounds like it's just the sticking point of the cutting relative to the Fish and Wildlife Service release of requirements for the newly listed endangered species. But we, we could cut the 190 trees that we have permission to do at the moment. Right. That's the other thing is you could you could cut the permitted trees and then the remainder we could wait on. Um, all right, Aaron, I have to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alex's hand is up. I'm gonna have to hand it over to someone else to chair the remainder of this, um, but I will check in with I Aaron. just have a quick question for Jen before you go real quick. Yeah. Um, you said many times this is fully permitted. I also heard there's no building permit. What? What is the order of permitting? Somebody's waiting for us? No, so some... we ahead. have Go issued a, a notice. We have issued a permit under the NOI process and it can right. be fully conditioned. It's what happens is there's been, this project has changed hands. And so there have been what we as a commission in public meetings have determined as my I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. Alex, I'm just have to go to another work meeting right can, now. I can address that question. Okay. I thanks. can address the I'm answer. Sorry of course. Off, Alex, I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate everyone's time. I'll see you all soon. Yeah. Okay. So, so Jen, so Jen, thank you, Jen. Uh, Aaron, just for my edification, yeah. I heard there's no building permit, so the ground cannot be broken until there is a building permit. Is somebody waiting for us to finish this? Is the CV... Uh, the zoning board got to act. What is the order of events for the town before they can break ground? Right. And, so, and also in this answer, please explain to me why what the CONCOM has done uh, allows them to go forward without being fully permitted. 
concom has done that allows them to go forward without being fully permitted. So, okay. So I heard that they do not have a building permit. That means they, they don't have a fully permitted project. Right. So, okay. So in order to construct the facility, they need a building permit. Um, and so there's two things there there's a request for a building permit right now for the bridge so the bridge requires a separate building permit versus the facility which requires another that has nothing to do with the tree removal the town has already approved the tree removal that was in the original order of conditions this is like a difference of like 15 trees um, that were needed for the fire department for their turning um and and to fletcher's point there i think that probably the out 20 to 30 of them are located in concom jurisdiction. I'm just I'm just throwing a number out there, but just to estimate that there it's a, a fraction of the overall tree removal. So yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get a, a handle on the basket of permits that's required for this project. And can they go forward without having the basket full? Well, right. So if if they could move forward with everything um, that was originally permitted. Right. In order to make the changes that, you know, we've negotiated, then they would have to get approval for us for those modifications to the plan. Um, but typically how it works is an order of conditions is issued a let's say special permit from the zoning board is issued and then once they're ready to move forward with construction. So usually there's a pre construction meeting at the pre construction meeting, they would then either have a building permit in hand or they would be the building permit release of that would be pending the erosion control inspection, which is what's happening with the, the bridge currently. So once I've inspected erosion controls, I can release the building permit so that the work can go forward. But my sign off is needed on that as well as the fire department sign off and all of the department sign offs. Um, so they need all the permits from all the various entities in town to sign off on the building permit. So the building permit is kind of the last piece that they get before ground is broken, if that makes sense. Um, well, okay, can, thanks for the clarification. I don't want to drag this out any further. Sure. Um, and to Fletcher's comment about jurisdiction, I think the Endangered Species Act goes to the entire town. The fact that that issue is coming up in the CONCOM I think the town expects the CONCOM to react to that and have something to say. There is no other committee in town that would address it. So whether it's in jurisdiction or out of jurisdiction, I think it's fair game for us to talk about it. Oh, I completely agree with you. I just need the commission to understand that our jurisdiction ends at the resource areas that are spelled out in the Wetlands Protection Act. I got that. I got yep. that. But the Endangered yep. Species Act goes to the town. And the state, not so. Well, so I, I yeah, think that, yeah. Fletcher's, I mean, I'm... Fletcher's comment was somehow that our discussion was inappropriate, and I disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a. It's really interesting because um, I've got a one thirty meeting, but I have time to talk about this until then. Other folks, if you need to go, please speak up. But Michelle and I have been talking a lot about this offline, and I know the question has come up about the migratory bird act um and one of the questions that arose um was about forest cutting plans because there are new so and forest cutting plans are not approved by me they're not approved by the town we don't have a forest cutting bylaw in town if somebody wants to do a forest cut anywhere in the state that doesn't have a forest cutting bylaw they go to dcr and they have a, a licensed forester who puts together a forest cutting plan and then that forest cutting plan is sent to us as a courtesy where we can if there's any issues related to wetlands that we want to bring up we can comment on and it's approved by the state and then they can move forward with their forest cut um, to my knowledge and we're in touch with the state with the supervisor of the state service foresters they're not even aware that there's any time of year restrictions for um, right, so the migratory bat or i mean for the migratory yeah. bird um, with, act or the with regard to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, I think it's fair to say that Andre and I are experts in the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and I myself worked on special regulations for that act. Um, and I'm happy to have a discussion with you about the implications of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and taking of nests and eggs. But okay. not now. Yeah, no, of course, not absolutely, not and now. and 
and I think that would be great for us to get your your um, insight and that's um, a whole other discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I do have to go because I'm getting a call from Dave right now. I have a meeting in 15 minutes. We have to talk. Um, we meet. Aaron, can I just ask? So I, <laughs> no. okay. So our jurisdiction <laughs> no. is wetlands, but this is on conservation land. Does our jurisdiction no? It's not. Ex- it's not conservation land. Hickory Ridge is not all. It's no. not. Okay. No, all it's right, not yet. It. I'll let it's you go. not yet. It's not yet. So um, I think we should continue this discussion, Lawrence. Let's check in offline um, about sort of next steps. But I think. This is good. I mean, this is the democratic process and the reason conservation commissions exist. So you guys are doing your job and vetting this and, um, you know, we'll get through it together and we'll figure out a solution. And um, yeah. So what, uh, somebody, are our, what are our next steps, John, um, Aaron? Well, we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting and then we can sort of um, re-engage the discussion at that point um, as to the next steps. But, um, uh, quick question from me to everyone. Um, obviously, it, 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 is the remaining discussion around the bats, or is there any concerns with the proposed changes? Because all of the, the, the a lot of the stuff that you highlighted on your note um, could be done by issuing the IFC sets, and we can submit the building permits. Um, it, it's just we didn't want to have the stamped IFC sets prepared if you were going to direct us to do other changes, because changes we've made have already been directed from the town. We don't want to have to go back and and then do other changes. So it, it is the proposed or are the proposed changes uh, 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 um, an issue or is it all to do with the timing with the Northern Long Ed back? Like, does anyone have any concerns about, in principle, the additional trees coming down, the, the changes to the roadway, the pulling back of the, uh, uh, the fence lines and things like that? It, it seems like what you're doing, what you want to do is kind of poll us. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's my that's my that was my only concern um, or my that's what I was concerned about. I don't know about the rest. So we have four members of the of the concom present. Is that enough to vote? It is. Um, it's enough to to have a quorum. Um, yeah. yeah, but um, go ahead. Um, I think we, I think we decided already that we're going to talk about it the next uh, meeting. No? Yeah, I, I don't feel I need a vote um, to, 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 to settle this. I just need to have some indication of whether I, uh, I'm going to expect to have some changes to direct to the engineers, and in which case I'll hold off on uh, issuing an IFC set. Or if the discussion is just about timing and, and long-eared bats and, and, and owls and, and red, red, hawk, red tail hawks and things, then that's fine. We can, we can have that discussion at the next meeting, but I'll be further down the line with those stamp plans, which will address some of the things that that Aaron showed up on the uh, all of the things that Aaron showed up on the original thing. Yeah, I think my sense is that the commission was on board with um, the engineering changes and that the discussion is just around the cutting at this point. Okay. Okay, so um, I don't want to a jump in his chair. If one of you want to jump in his chair and direct a motion, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Michelle? <laughs> um, I move to adjourn the meeting at 1.11 p.m. Second. <laughs> and a vote. Oh, sorry. Cameron? Aye. Andre? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. right. Thank you, everyone. See you guys later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lawrence. Bye.